Now we want to turn our attention to fisheries oceanography. And fisheries oceanography in many ways is really sort of the original oceanography to some degree. When men went out on the Challenger expedition and uh, the U.S. exploring expedition and really short, shorter expeditions, sort of coastal expeditions previous to that and subsequent to those major world ocean expeditions, they were really interested in finding out how could we predict fish stocks? It was an important to know to how many, how much fishing effort um, that fishermen were going to have to um, undergo, how many fish were going to be available to feed people, and all those different kinds of things. And this really attracted the attention of oceanographers. What kinds of ocean conditions, physical, chemical, biological conditions, lead to a richly productive fisheries environment or lead to lesser fish stocks? And this really is the domain of fisheries oceanography. Oceanography concerned with the biological, chemical, physical processes that lead to the production of fishes. So it really is really kind of an applied oceanography, but an important one since, of course, most of the protein that the, or the number one protein fed upon in the world is fish. So fisheries oceanography is extremely important. One of the goals of fisheries oceanographers, those oceanographers who study the physical and chemical environments related to the abundance and distribution of fishes, is really to provide information that helps fisheries managers manage the abundance, the fishing of fish stocks in a sustainable way. This is something called fisheries management. And fisheries management and any even really ecosystem management of any kind is a subject and an issue that's fraught with uh, debate and clashing sides and all those kinds of things. Of course, you're talking about people's livelihoods when you try to manage down the fisheries and you say, no, you can't take so many fish and we have to shut down fisheries because too many are taken. And it really is a field that's really uh, fraught with difficulty for anyone going into it. And it's kind of a thankless job to some sense because um, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, you provide good information that says, look, the fish stocks aren't going to make it very well this year, so we can only fish a couple days out of the month. And you're really limiting people's ability to make a living, uh, even though ultimately you're trying to save their living by keeping the fish alive. And so it's a very controversial field. But I think as we continue to ignore it in, in the way that we need to pay attention to it, we're learning that we are overfishing the fish in the ocean and that we do need to come up with measures to ensure that there are abundant fish stocks, not only for fishermen, but also for divers and anybody that wants to just simply enjoy an environment that's full of fish. Let's look at some of the principles of fisheries oceanography. Um, but before we do that, this is sort of the grim state of the ocean. This is almost 10 years ago now in terms of what kinds of stocks remain in the ocean. Some 47% of the ocean of remaining fish stocks that we know about and we know about most of them um, are fully fished out. We pretty much um, are completely fishing half of what we, um, half of what's available. 18% or overfish, 9% um, completely depleted, 21% moderately fished, and of course these statistics probably change, but really only 25% of the remaining sort of fishery place, places where we can go and catch fish, only 25% are really moderately fished or even underexploited, and of course the pressure on those underexploited under or moderately fished um, fishing grounds is tremendous and these percentages have probably changed in the last 10 years. Um, one study in 1996 pointed out that predatory fishes and that would be the large fishes, the tunas, the marlins, the swordfishes, the kinds of large fishes, even sharks that people eat um, regularly, their stocks have been diminished by 90 percent since the 1950s. So it's hard to argue that the ocean is not overfished. And really prior to global warming sort of hitting the, the world stage as the major issue for the, for the world to um, pay attention to, overfishing for oceanographers is, I would argue, the number one environmental issue that oceanographers are concerned about. We simply can't 
keep fishing the ocean the way we're fishing it. As a young boy, I saw that happen in Florida. You used to catch large fish when I was young. When I was a teenager, you couldn't find those large fish anymore. You could see fish leaving reefs or see smaller fish on the reefs than you saw previously. We've seen it off the coast of California as well. The kinds of fish that people are catching now and the, people that, the kind of fish that people will bring in these days are fish that we'd throw back. Um, back in 10, 20, 30 years ago. So we really are exerting tremendous predatory pressure on fishes in the ocean, and I think most oceanographers would agree that we really need to somehow come up with measures to save the fish, at least for our own good, so that we have fish around to eat in the future.